last time reading the book The Plunder Pit by T.C. Bridges. This book was given to me by my gran and pa when I was nine years old. It was given to my pa back in 1938 as a, uh, as a prize from All Souls School in Charters Towers for history and geography. I hope you enjoy. The Plunder Pit by T.C. Bridges Chapter 1 The Seventh Wave Thud! Wump! The sound was like the firing of a great gun and the echoes came booming slowly and majestically across the flat surface of the sea to hammer back from the tall limestone cliffs of North Devon. Clive Medland, lying flat in the stern of the small boat, jumped up in a hurry and looked towards the northwest, whence the sound had come. Thunder! Chad! he said sharply. Couldn't be anything else, agreed Chadwick in his deep, quiet voice and he began to pull in his heavily weighted fishing line. You might get up the anchor, Clive. There was no need for the request, for Clive was already in the bow, hauling in coils of dripping rope. Anything that wanted doing, Clive did in a hurry. The small anchor came clanging in, and the thunder rolled again, louder than before. Out to sea, a black cloud was rising. It was tipped with rolls of white like fluffs of cotton wool, and already the glass-smooth surface of the long swells were rippled by the first breath of wind. Chad glanced at the coming storm, and his grey eyes narrowed slightly. Then his big body came to sudden life. He seized a rope, the sail shot up, he made the rope fast to a cleat, shifted swiftly into the stern, and seized his tiller. The sail filled and the boat, lying over, began to hiss through the water. White fire lit the heart of the cloud, and thunder bellowed again. Clive frowned as he stared at the swiftly approaching tempest, and noted the direction of the wind. We'll never make it back to Bullport, he said. We're not trying it, Chad said briefly, and pointed to a narrow opening in the cliffs almost dead ahead. We'll run in there and shelter till it's over. Good notion, Clive agreed. What cove is that? The mouth of the Badger Brook. That's all I know, for I've never been in there. But there's shelter, and that's all that matters. A gust struck the boat as he spoke and healed her until the foam seethed along her gunwale. Chad let out the sheet. She righted and sped on towards the coast. Every minute the wind increased. Then the great cloud swept over the sun and instantly everything was plunged in deep shadow, lit every few moments by the blaze of lightning. Lucky for us there's a harbour handy, Clive said, picking up a baler. The dinghy wouldn't last long in this. He was right, for already wave tops were breaking over the small boat and he had to bail hard to keep her from filling. Chad nodded and held the boat straight for the gap opposite. Already waves were leaping in white spouts against the tall cliffs on either side of the opening. Their roar grew louder every minute, and the crashes of thunder more frequent. Suddenly, Clive gave a shout. Look, Chad, look! He pointed to the cliff foot at the right of the gap, where a slim figure clung to a ledge just above the wave tops. Chad looked. A girl, he cried, and without a moment's hesitation, swung the boat round towards her. Clive held his breath. He didn't see a hope either for them or the girl. Once in the grip of those breakers, the boat would be lifted and smashed to matchwood on the iron hard rocks. But Chad showed no sign of nervousness. Drop the sail, Clive. Take the boat hook. Fend off if you can, he ordered. Clive let the sail down with a run and grabbed the boat hook. 
Chad shipped the oars and used all his great strength to hold the dinghy off the rocks. Jump! Clyde yelled to the girl. She had already turned and was standing with her back to the cliff. She was rather white, yet although the waves were breaking over her knees, Clive saw that she was quite cool. She was gathering herself to jump when the big wave came. Two men could not have held the boat against it. The light craft was raised on its crest and flung with a crash against the cliff. Quite what happened in the next few seconds Clive hardly knew. But when the wave had dropped back, he found himself on the ledge next to the girl and Chad on the other side of him. Some planks and two oars were floating beneath them, all that remained of the dinghy. Hold on, cried the girl, another wave coming. Long trails of seaweed hung from the ledge above. She twisted her fingers among them and the boys did the same. The next wave washed to their waists, but they clung on. As it sank back, the girl spoke to Clive. There's another ledge above. If I got on your shoulders, I could do it. All right, be quick, Clive snapped, and up she went, light and nimble as a squirrel. Clive felt her jump. Then she was off his shoulders and lying flat on the ledge above. Come on, she called. I can help you now. Clive waited for the next wave to come and fall, then made a frantic scramble and, with the girl's help, got a hold on the second ledge and pulled himself up. Good for you, said Chad, and jumped with all his might. Being a head taller than Clive, he was able to grasp the ledge and the others helped him up. Chad sat upon the ledge with his legs dangling and looked down. That's all right, he said in his quiet way. All right for an hour, replied the girl in an equally quiet voice. Chad looked at her, then at the cliff. He nodded. I see what you mean. The tide comes over this ledge. A good six feet above it, was the girl's reply. Chad stood up, faced the cliff, studied it for a while, then spoke to Clive. I think we can pull her up high enough to be safe. The girl heard. Don't worry about me, she retorted. I can climb as well as you. Chad smiled. He liked her pluck. Come on then, he said. The three scrambled along the ledge. It was very narrow and very slippery. And by this time rain was coming down in torrents. The roar of the waves just below them almost drowned the thunder and spray leaping up stung their faces. Chad stopped and pointed to a projecting knob of rock. He reached up, got hold of it and drew himself up. Then he pulled the girl up and afterwards Clive. Above them was a deep niche running slantly upward. There was room at the bottom for all three and, crouching in it, they found shelter from the driving rain. We're above high water mark, Chad said. We're safe here, the girl agreed. She looked at Chad. It was nice of you to come after me. I'm frightfully sorry you lost your boat. Better than losing our lives, Chad said gravely. Now do you mind telling me what you were doing on that ledge? I was looking for the plunder pit, the girl replied. That's the end of chapter one. Good night. Sleep tight.